The future is printed. How 3D metal printers are reinventing battlefield logistics in Ukraine. You don't win wars with firepower alone. You win them by staying in the fight, hour after hour, day after day, and increasingly that means repairing what's broken faster than the enemy can destroy it. That's why a quiet technological revolution is unfolding on Ukraine's muddy front lines. Not with a bang, but with a buzz. In 2023, Australia's Speed deployed a fleet of high-performance 3D metal printers to Ukraine. Machines that can fabricate everything from engine brackets to turret mounts. Crikey! Now, in a war defined by attrition, these printers are proving just as important as tanks and artillery. Hey friends, Wes here, and I love my Australian viewers. I need to make my way down under one of these days soon, especially since things are getting a little uh, spicy up here in North America. What I'm saying is, mates, don't be surprised if my wife and I show up at your house and ask to crash on your couch. As long as you're not in Brisbane. I don't do Brisbane. So what we're talking about is print or die. On-demand sustainment in combat conditions. Forget the rear echelon with Speed's Warp Speed Metal Printers. Now embedded in forward logistics hubs, Ukrainian soldiers can fabricate critical repair parts within hours. No depot wait times, no months-long procurement cycles, no dependency on legacy supply chains already buckling under the global strain. That's the tactical difference here. The printers can operate near the front, even in contested zones, using Speed's proprietary supersonic deposition system. The process sprays metal powder mixed with compressed air at speeds over Mach 2, bonding layer after layer to produce functional, stress-tested components. Each printer costs about $1 million. Seven have already arrived through the Department of Defense's Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative. Another three were en route via direct support from the Australian government in 2023. So how are they doing? Now, these aren't just lab toys. They're printing parts of consequence. Components that, if missing, would ground a vehicle, silence a gun, or stall an entire battalion's advance. So really what we're talking about is the warfighter's toolbox when the factory comes to the foxhole. Speed 3D's machines were never designed for showroom floors. They were stress tested in the remote bush of Northern Australia, where the only thing more unforgiving than the terrain was the logistics chain. In 2020, the Australian Army trialed the first field-deployable Speed 3D printers during exercise Kulindong. Kulindong. Is that right? Kulindong. Since then, the tech has been refined, ruggedized, and adopted by militaries from the UK all the way to the US. Now it's in Ukraine, where the stakes are higher and the problems more urgent. Forget what you thought you knew about military repair. The days of dragging a busted vehicle back to a depot 300 miles away are rapidly ending. In Ukraine, the factory is now wherever the fight is. The arrival of Speed 3D's Warp Speed 3D metal printers on the battlefield marks a profound shift in what logistics looks like under fire. For decades, military sustainment has relied on a slow-moving pipeline with parts built in one country, stored in another, and shipped across continents to meet demand. Now that's fine for peacetime garrisons and predictable deployments, but it collapses under the weight of high-intensity conflict, where a supply line is only as strong as the next drone strike, rail bridge sabotage, or customs bottleneck. Hell, the U.S. military even built an entire force structure around the absence of supply chains, the expeditionary force. Now, in Ukraine, where a Soviet BMP can break down in the middle of a minefield or a NATO-supplied howitzer may need a unique part sourced from three vendors in three different countries, speed isn't a luxury. It's life. That's what makes these printers so revolutionary. The Warp Speed 3D doesn't just spit out novelty keychains or test coupons for metallurgy students. It builds hardened mission-critical parts, everything from turbine components to mounting brackets and drive sprockets with performance specs suitable for operational combat use. Picture this. A frontline unit has a fuel pump housing crack on a Cold War era tracked vehicle. The manufacturer stopped making them in 1991. 
the part isn't in stock, and the backup vehicle is 80 kilometers away. That used to mean parking the platform and hoping for a resupply. Today, it means uploading a CAD file and printing a new housing that will be ready by morning. That's what's happening right now on the Ukrainian front. This isn't theory. It's already saving lives and keeping brigades moving. The Warp Speed 3D printer uses cold spray additive manufacturing, a process that sounds like science fiction, but it's pure engineering muscle. It propels metal powders at supersonic speeds faster than Mach 2 onto a substrate, layer by layer, until a part materializes. No laser beds, no annealing chambers, no fragile setup that requires lab conditions. These printers are built to run in a tent, in the mud, under a tarp, and with diesel fumes in the air. And it's not just about replicating what broke. Ukrainian engineers are modifying designs on the fly, thickening a stress point here, adding a bolt reinforcement there. They're not just replacing parts, they're improving them under fire. That's the quiet genius of Battlefield 3D printing. It doesn't just close the gap between failure and function. It puts engineering innovation in the hands of the soldier. Every printout becomes a tactical decision. Repair or adapt. Replace or upgrade. Standard issue or situationally optimized. The operator becomes the engineer and the battlefield becomes the prototype lab. This is wartime innovation at its finest. It's the same impulse that turned civilian drones into precision FPV weapons or repurposed commercial Starlink terminals into a national communications grid. And it's being led not from corporate headquarters, but by NCOs with dirt under their fingernails and a laptop running SOLIDWORKS. So yeah, the factory has moved. It's no longer in Stugart or Topeka. It's in Kharkiv. It's in Zaporizhia, in a hastily camouflaged shed behind a trench line. It's being run by soldiers who understand that in modern warfare, staying in the fight often comes down to who can build the unbuildable when it matters most. That's not just sustainment, that's a strategic advantage. Printed in metal, designed for attrition, logistics in the age of continuous combat. Now the difference between surviving a firefight and being steamrolled isn't always about the best armor or the deadliest gun. Sometimes it's about having a spare wheel hub or a tow cable. Ukraine's fight isn't just about holding ground. It's about keeping what's already in theater running day after day. In this environment, where thousands of vehicles and weapon systems of varying origin are in play, replacement parts are rarely on the shelf. The old model of military logistics, haul it in from the rear, fix it in the depot, and ship it forward, just doesn't work anymore when the depot is under drone surveillance and the rail yard is one HIMARS strike from oblivion. Instead, the future is emerging right now at forward repair sites in Zaporizhia or Kharkiv where a Ukrainian engineer is printing a component no longer in production for a platform built in the 1980s based on a CAD model that didn't exist until this morning. This is the battlefield version of agile development and Ukraine is writing the playbook. For all of the high-profile deliveries, Bushmasters, M777s, counter drone systems, Australia's decision to double down on additive manufacturing may be its most forward-looking contribution yet. During his 2025 White House visit, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese pledged an additional $13 million in high-tech assistance to Ukraine, including mobile X-ray machines, demining gear, counter UAV systems, and three more warp speed 3D printers. And in doing so, Australia isn't just donating equipment, it's exporting a philosophy. Modern conflict isn't just about the fight, it's about the fix. As Defense Industry Minister Pat Conroy put it, quote, these printers will be used to produce spare parts on battlefields. It's modern MacGyver meets warfighter resilience, end quote. Even the Royal Australian Air Force's deployment of a Wedgetail AWACS platform to Ramstein Air Base, tracking missile threats from Belarus to the Black Sea, demonstrates a keen understanding of layered defense built on real-time responsiveness. But it's the printers that represent the future, not just for Ukraine, but for how every Western army might have to fight in a world where logistics is no longer guaranteed. There's a deeper truth here. One the Kremlin should be paying attention to. Additive manufacturing doesn't just make your military more resilient, 
it changes the rules of war itself. When your opponent can regenerate combat power locally, even after taking losses, it complicates your calculus. It undermines your attrition strategy. It dulls your numerical advantage. Imagine a future conflict in the Pacific where forward deployed U.S. Marine expeditionary units are isolated for weeks. If they can print what breaks, they stay operational. If they can't, well, they become irrelevant. Ukraine is proving that 3D printing at the tactical edge is not just a nice to have, it's survival. From Melbourne to Mykolaiv, technology in service of sovereignty. Back in Australia, Speed 3D CEO Byron Kennedy summed it up best, quote, military personnel will now have the ability to print metal parts of consequence, large and small, that could otherwise halt in advance or cripple an operation, end quote. And while Ukraine's ambassador to Australia called the donation a significant show of innovative solidarity, the reality is even more potent. It's not just solidarity. It's sovereignty through sustainment. This isn't about gadgets. It's about war-winning logistics built on decentralized software-driven engineer-enabled fabrication. The kind that turns supply delays into same-day turnarounds and irreparable losses into printable solutions. Every war has its iconic tech. The Spitfire, the Sherman, the Stinger. In Ukraine, it might be the humble 3D printer. Unarmed, unarmored, but utterly indispensable. Because in the end, it's not just about what breaks. It's about who can fix it fastest. And right now, thanks to some brilliant minds in Melbourne and a war-tested appetite for innovation in Kyiv, Ukraine is winning that race. That's it for today, friends. Subscribing is a great way to support independent journalism, so please feel free to do the thing. And to my Australians, well, advance Australia. Crikey! Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.